Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto raised by his uncle, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also support your Songbird for his fantastic skill, link in description, so let's begin the story. There he is. Get him. Get the demon called a random villager from a crowd of angry people. A little blonde boy turned around at the voice and started running. Running for his life. Hurry up. Get him another villager called, making the boy run faster. We'll kill you demon cries kept being thrown from the mob of villagers, directed at the scared young blonde. He ran into an alley and hid behind a trash can, watching as the crowd ran past the alley looking for him. He breathed a sigh of relief when no one saw him. Why do they hate me so much? Why do they say demon the boy thought, walking down to the end of the alley. He crouched down in a dark corner and curled up into a ball, beginning to sob uncontrollably. His cries were interrupted however when he heard a laugh to his left. Two village men were walking towards him, cracking their knuckles and grinning evilly. Well look what the cat dragged in Bucho, a demon, ripe for the picking said the man on the right, reaching down and picking the boy up by his collar. He, I got my first hit, Bayuki said Bucho, raising his fist for a punch. He brought it down, quickly and painfully hitting the boy's gut. The young blonde grit his teeth and bit his cheek to keep himself from screaming. He knew if he screamed, then more would come. It wasn't the first time something like that happened. Ayuki dropped the boy, but before he could hit the ground, delivered a kick to his side that sent him into a nearby wall. The boy went down on all fours, coughing painfully. A few coughs was all he got before the men were on him again, delivering kicks to his stomach and face. Alright Bucho, we better get out of here before one of the Anbu show up. Bayuki said, delivering one final kick to knock the boy out. Fine. Damn that was fun. I can't remember the last time I did that Bayuki said, stretching his arms across his chest and behind his head. The two men walked away, leaving the boy to fall unconscious. Why thought the boy, fresh tears rolling out of his eyes and hitting the ground where his cheek lay. The suddenly became dark around him as he slipped away into his nightmares about what would happen to him while he was unconscious. Meanwhile in the Hokage Tower, the third Hokage Saratobi sat at his desk filing through papers. A puff of smoke protruded from his left, and from it emerged a worried-looking Anbu. What is it Saratobi asked, pushing aside his papers so they were no longer in front of him. Hokage-sama, I bear troubling news. We just received a letter from Whirlpool Country saying they know of Naruto's existence and are sending a platoon of 500 samurai and their best ninja to retrieve him. Said the Anbu. What? How did they find out? When will they be here? Saratobi yelled, slamming his hand on his desk and standing. We don't know how they found out Hokage-sama, but they will arrive in a little over an hour. The Anbu said, taking half a step back. Damn it get every member of the council. We need to decide what to do about this. Saratobi said. Not waiting for a reply, he left the office in a hurry, heading towards the meeting room. A man about six foot seven walked on the path towards Konoha, a brigade of samurai following behind him in an orderly fashion. He had burnt red hair that stopped down, past his ears, parted to cover one eye and reveal another sky blue one. His features were hardened, his face slender and masculine. He had a medium build but was well muscularly toned. He was dressed in black hakama pants and a dark orange hakama shirt. His shirt isn't fastened and parted to reveal a chest with two scars on it, each perpendicular to the other. Excuse me, Idio Sama said a samurai to Idio's left. What is it Idio said, not looking at the samurai or slowing his pace at all. What will we do to find young Naruto Sama? We can't expect them to just give him to us. The samurai said, falling in step with Idio. Hmm, that's a good point. Once we get to the leaf, you and one other man will look for my nephew, while I speak with the damned village's council. Idio said, clenching his fist at mentioning the council. He knew it was their idea to keep Naruto, their idea to tell them he was dead. And if they don't yield, we go to war with Kanoha. Idio said, a look on his face that told the samurai he was serious. The samurai nodded and fell back into his position behind Idio. He nudged the samurai to his left and told him they were going to look for Naruto while their leader spoke with the council. They both nodded and continued walking. Come one. We're picking up our pace, Idio. Hauled back to his men as he ran ahead. Everyone quickly followed, and they were now running towards the village hidden in the leaves. The council in front of Saratobi was all but happy at the news they were presented with. A group of 500 samurai was headed towards them, intending to take away Naruto. Saratobi rubbed his temples to prevent a migraine from coming on. The room was as noisy as it was the day the fourth Hokage died fighting the demon fox. Saratobi slammed his hand down on the table, silencing the room. Good, now please, one at a time how do you think we should go about this he said, looking over the council elders with appraising eyes. What does it matter? I say give them the demon and throw a party being rid of it said one of the civilian council members. The man's outburst got a chorus of cheers from other members who felt the same. No. We must have the boy. He is a very promising asset to this village. 
Give him to me and I will train him and turn him into a weapon that can be used on a whim. Said the war craze power hungry elder council member that was, Danzu. No Danzu, I have seen the initiates that come out of your agency. No emotions at all. They're like ghosts in a human body. Siratobi said, remembering an encounter he had with a root agent. Troublesome, why don't we give Naruto to them? They're his biological family and whirlpool, the strongest village in history. They will go to war with us if we don't give him up, resulting in our destruction. Shikaku Nara of the Shinobi Council said. Shibi Aburam, Choza Akamichi, and Inoichi Yamanaka quickly agreed. It would be illogical to go into a war we cannot win. Shibi said, folding his arms across his chest. Saratobi thought of this for a moment, then sighed, clearly stressed about the situation. And not to mention they have the strongest of the seven deadly sins as their leader, Idio Yuzumaki. Kakashi Haddock said matter of factly. Saratobi nodded and sighed again. Just then a ninja and a vest walked in with a lit cigarette in his mouth. Father, he's here. Dottie said, directing his words toward Siratobi. Thank you, Asuma, please send him in. Siratobi said. Asuma nodded and motioned for Idio to enter the room. The second his foot cleared the doorway, everyone in the room was hit by the most powerful killer intent they had ever felt. Anyone on their feet was quickly forced to a sitting position as the pressure coursed through their bodies. Now, would you willingly give me my nephew, or must I take him by force? Idio said, looking over to the trembling council. A pink haired woman rose from her seat and pointed at Idio. Who the hell do you think you are? You can't take our citizens at will, she yelled in a pitch that could shatter glass. And it did to some of the smaller glasses of water on the table. Idio wiggled a finger in his ear and winced. Damn woman. Has anyone ever told you that you sound like a banshee? He said, taking his finger away from his head. Inoichi and Choza burst into laughter when the woman became flushed red with anger. Hokage-sama. I demand him to be put to death, she yelled, again making a few glasses shatter. Not a chance, Miss Hirono. Siratobi said, slightly snickering at the woman's expense. Anyways, back to my nephew. Idio said, getting shocked looks from around the room. Nephew. Oh, of course. Naruto's your nephew. Troublesome Shikaku said, mentally slapping himself for not realizing it sooner. Idio nodded and again turned his attention to the council. So? Easy, or hard? Which do you prefer he said, glaring at the elders in particular. The two samurai that were assigned to find Naruto walked the streets of Konoha, wishing they could kill them all for keeping the heir to Whirlpool hidden. They passed by an angry group of people and decided to ask them if they knew anything. Excuse me, but have you by chance seen a young boy named Naruto anywhere one of the samurai said to the group. They all turned, and their eyes went wide when they saw the Whirlpool symbol on their dark red armor. One of the villagers smirked. They must have been sent to deal with that demon. Dottie thought. The villager stepped forward and said, we're looking for him now. I can help you if you want. Dot the samurai looked at each other and nodded. All right, where does he usually reside? The samurai on the left said to a shocked villager. The man started to laugh, as did the other people around him. Probably in some alley by now, he said, clutching his side from laughter. Just then, Bayuki and Bucho walked up to them. Damn right. We kicked him and left him unconscious in some random alley, Bucho said, earning a wave of cheers and claps from the group. The two samurai became furious at the two men and lunged at them. They pinned each man onto a nearby wall by their necks, holding them in the air. Where is he one? Samurai yelled, his masked face inches away from the frightened man. I in an alley next T2. Aichiraku's Raymond Bayuki said, pointing a shaky finger in the direction of the Raymond stand. The two samurai released the men and sprinted in the direction of Naruto, hoping he wasn't too badly injured. When they arrived they saw a small blonde boy curled up into a ball and sobbing, leaning up against a cold stone wall. Both samurai were furious and sad to see him in such a state. The one on the right approached the boy and in a soft and gentle voice said, Hello young man. Are you Naruto Uzumaki? Naruto looked up from his eyes and instantly became frightened. He scooted back frantically, pressing his body against a far wall, trying to get away. P please. Please no more. Please. It hurts so much it hurts he said, looking up at the samurai with terrified eyes. The samurai had to fight back tears as he walked towards Naruto. The other samurai punched a wall in anger, making a large hole in it, and frightening Naruto. He realized this and said, forgive me, he bowed his head to the ground, much to the surprise of Naruto. The samurai closest to Naruto reached a hand out slowly to the boy. Naruto closed his eyes and began to sob, awaiting the inevitable punch that was coming his way. But it never came. Instead he felt a slight pressure on his shoulder. His eyes shot open in surprise as he looked at the masked man before him. My name is Aiko. He said, taking off his mask to reveal his face. Aiko's face was slightly rounded at the bottom, but an obvious scar went across his forehead. The other samurai walked up and removed his mask, revealing the face of a beautiful woman. Her eyes were a dark brown, and her face seemed to be molded perfectly. She was honestly the most beautiful woman Naruto ever met. I am Hinako. 
it is a pleasure to meet you Naruto Samadachi she said, letting her flowing brown hair fall as she removed her helmet and bowed. Naruto looked at the pair with shock and doubt. Why you won't H hurt me he said, his voice and body slightly shaking. The two gave a sad but warm smile towards Naruto. We would never do such a thing like Naruto-sama. We are here to protect Dot Hanako, said, kneeling down next to Naruto. Naruto's mood changed instantly, and he tackled Hanako in a hug. Yay. I have friends he called in a mixture of tears and laughter. Aiko smiled down at the laughing pair. They're like brother and sister, he thought as he rose to his feet. Naruto-sama, we must take you to your uncle now. I am sure he would be glad to see you. Aiko said, now standing next to Hanako. I have an uncle. This is the best day of my life Naruto yelled, now clinging onto Aiko. Hanako smiled and extended her hand for Naruto to take, which he excitedly did. Hanako and Naruto walked ahead hand in hand out of the alley. Can we eat at Ichiraku's please? Their Raymond is awesome Naruto said, looking up at Hanako with hopeful eyes. Hanako giggled and nodded, much to Naruto's enjoyment. When they entered they were greeted by an aroma that would forever be in their nostrils. We have to get one of these places in Whirlpool. Aiko said, drooling excitedly at the smell. Idiot. Hanako said, giving a whack on the head and making Naruto laugh. Aiko groaned and rubbed the back of his head, mumbling to himself about something unknown. Well hello Naruto said an old man with a bowl in his hand. Hi Gramps Tucci Naruto said, waving his head at the Raymond vendor. Tucci smiled at him and placed down a fresh bowl of Raymond. This one's on the house. He said, placing a pair of chopsticks next to the bowl. Naruto excitedly ran over and jumped onto the stool, thanking Tucci and digging into his Raymond. It's nice to see someone decent in this place. Aiko said to Tucci. Oh, you must mean how some people treat Naruto. It truly is disgraceful to themselves and their families. Tucci said, placing down bowls of Raymond on each side of Naruto for Aiko and Hinako. They thanked him and sat down, Aiko's sword drawn and laced between his legs just in case. Just then, a swaying drunken man walked by. He had an empty bottle in hand, trying to get another drop out of it, as if it were still full. The man heard Naruto's laughter and looked into the Raymond stand. Upon seeing Naruto, he boiled with rage and drunken stupidity. Oh look it's the demon. I have a bottle with your head's name on it, brat he thought, raising the bottle over his head and stumbling towards Naruto. The sound of metal hitting glass was, heard, startling Naruto and making him turn. His eyes widened at what he saw. A bottle was, inches away from his head, stopped by a flat steel blade that didn't seem to move in the slightest. He followed the blade down to its burnt orange hilt, then to the hand that held it. Aiko was, holding the sword, protecting Naruto from harm. Hurt Naruto-sama, and you died. Aiko said in a cold and scary calm voice. The man seemed to become sober immediately, he stumbled back a couple feet and started running for his life. Naruto looked over at Aiko who was, calmly drinking the broth of his ramen. Thanks Aiko ni san Naruto said, smiling brightly at the samurai. Aiko almost choked at hearing Naruto call him brother. He looked down at the boy with shocked eyes, then smiled and ruffled the boy's hair. Come on Naruto-sama. We have to get you to your uncle now. Hinako said, getting off her stool. Okay, Hinako ni chan. Naruto said, again taking her hand. Hinako giggled and they started to walk off towards the Hokage Tower to face the nonsense council. Idio looked over the council in disgust, glaring at each one of the members that opposed him taking Naruto. Well, spit it out. What are your demands? An elderly council member said, standing from her chair in anger at the silence. Demands. What do you mean? Idio asked, as all he wanted was to leave with Naruto under his care. What do you want in return for letting us keep the demon boy in this village said Danzo. He was already prepared to give the man anything he wanted in exchange for being able to make Naruto his own personal weapon. Idio flared his chakra and everyone fell silent. Call him demon one more time, and it's war. He said. The tone of his voice told them he was completely serious and would do what he wanted here. As for what I want, I want to take Naruto to his rightful home. I want to take him into my protection and train him to be the best ninja in the world. Idio said, folding his arms across his chest. You have no right. Tell him Hokage-sama the pink-haired Haruno woman yelled, making everyone, the guys mainly, cringe at the pitch she could reach. Be silent Miss Haruno. And Idio-sama, isn't there anything else you would like? Siratobi said, turning his head to Idio in a questioning manner. Absolutely not. My nephew's safety is of highest importance to me. Idio said, again folding his arms across his partially bare chest. I don't see why this has to be so troublesome. Just let Naruto leave with his family, and this will all be over. Shikaku said, closing his eyes and letting out a long sigh. I like him. Idio said, looking at the Hokage and pointing to Shikaku. Saratobi let out a small chuckle and nodded in agreement. Hey you, what's your name? Idio said, looking over at Shikaku. Shikaku, Nara. Shikaku said, bowing his head slightly, then resting it lazily on his hand. Shikaku Nara, the seven deadly sins need a new sloth. The last one was killed unfortunately. 
I have heard of Nara's strength and genius. I believe you would make a very welcomed member. We also need a new gluttony, envy, and pride. Got anyone in mind Idio said, looking at Shikaku expectantly. Shikaku pointed to his right and left at Choza Akamichi and Inoichi Yamanaka. Gluttony and envy Dottie said, then pointing behind him at Shibi Aburam. Pride Dottie said, looking back lazily at Idio. Idio looked over the group and nodded. You four should seriously consider this offer I present to you. If war were to break out, you would want to be on the winning side. He said, smirking at the infuriated council. First you try and take our demon, then you take our shinobi yelled the elderly council member known as Kaharu. Idio's mood went from smug to enraged. You just called my nephew a demon again. Hokage, either it's war, or this woman is put to death by my hand here, and now Dottie said, placing his hand inside the equipment pouch he carried on his right leg. The hair smirked, she knew Saratobi would spare her. She knew she would live. No, she thought Saratobi would spare her. She thought she would live. Saratobi flinched at the threat, then closed his eyes. Forgive me Kaharu, but the village always comes first Dottie said sadly, giving Idio the go-ahead to end her miserable life. Idio was about to pull out a kunai and descend upon the frightened woman when a voice behind him stopped him in his tracks. Are you my uncle it said. Everyone turned to see Naruto standing next to a beautiful woman in samurai armor and holding her hand. The council members glared at Naruto, making him flinch and take a step behind Hinako. Idio returned the glare tenfold, making the council shiver slightly. Idio turned back to Naruto and smiled warmly like a father would to his son. He walked over and kneeled down on one knee in front of the boy. Yes Naruto, I am your uncle. It is very nice to finally meet you. Idio said, placing a hand on his nephew's head. Naruto's eyes filled with tears, and he lunged himself at his uncle, taking them both down to the floor. Idio let out a chuckle as the boy on top of him cried with joy. Everyone in the room, save the rookie nine senses, Shikaku, Inoichi, Choza, Shaibi, and Saratobi, scowled at the happiness of the boy in front of them who was a demon in their eyes. Shikaku rose from his seat, much to the surprise of everyone, and walked over to Idio and Naruto. He bent down and put out his hand towards Naruto. I'm Shikaku Nara, pleasure to meet you properly Naruto. Shikaku said, smiling slightly. Naruto hesitantly took his hand and shook it, returning the smile with an ear-to-ear -ear grin. Choza, Inoichi, and Shibi quickly did the same. Naruto loved this, he made so many new friends in one day. Sure they were much older than him, but he still saw them as friends. And he had a family, which he always wanted. It was almost like Kami himself was, delivering them to him, rewarding him for surviving the abuse from the village. Hinako, would you mind taking Naruto to buy some new clothes? Get him whatever he wants. Money is no issue. Idio said, passing Hinako a backpack filled with money. Hinako nodded and left with Naruto, much to his disappointment. That boy is something special. Almost no one can get Shikaku to smile. Much less give a proper greeting. Choza said, letting out a hearty laugh. Idio, your wrath, the strongest of the sins, correct Shikaku said, turning his head towards Idio. When Idio nodded Shikaku said, I'm joining the seven deadly sins. Idio smiled at him and then turned to the other three. Do you wish to join? If you do, you and your clan will be under the protection of Whirlpool. He said, mentally congratulating himself for the offer. Choza and Anoichi at the same time said, I'm joining. Shibi looked at Idio for a moment then said, it would be illogical to go against someone as powerful as yourself. I will join the seven deadly sins as well. This is treachery Danzo yelled, rising from his seat. He slammed his one good hand down on the desk and yelled, what are you going to do about this, they are all traitors. I say execute them he got a chorus of cheers from the council members that were on his side. These men and their respective clans are now under the protection of Whirlpool. To kill any of them would be an act of war. Idio said, glaring at the elderly council. Enough. Danzo sit down or I will remove you from this council permanently Saruto shouted, motioning with his finger for the elder to sit down. Danzo scowled and reluctantly took his seat. Do we have an understanding? Naruto and the Nara, Akamichi, Yamanaka, and Aburam clans are coming with me back to Whirlpool. Don't try to stop us and we leave peacefully. Try and we won't hesitate to cut you down right there. Oh and one more thing Idio said, looking over to Kaharu. He vanished and appeared behind the old woman. He drew a kunai and in one sweep, slit her throat. He again vanished, appearing in front of the doorway. Let's go. I want to see what Naruto chose. Dottie said walking out of the door, followed by Shikaku, Shibi, Choza, Inoichi, and Aiko. Where do you wish to go first? Naruto saw Mahinako ask as they walked through the market of Kanoha. Naruto curled his finger on his chin and thought. How about over there he said, pointing to an average looking clothing store. Hinako nodded and they started their way to the store, entering to see that it was, in fact not so average. There were rows upon rows of pants and tops. Anything you were looking for, you could probably find there. The aisles reached up and touched the ceiling. 
Hinako gaped at the huge mall-like store they had entered. Hinako Nichan. Are you okay Naruto asked, tugging on Hinako's hand. Huh? Oh yes. Sorry Naruto-sama. Hinako said, bowing her head to the young boy. Naruto scratched the back of his head and laughed nervously, he didn't think he'd ever get used to people doing that. Just then, Naruto spotted something out of the corner of his eye that made him turn and run towards it. Hinako caught up and asked him what was wrong. He pointed up at the outfit on the mannequin. Hinako looked up and smiled when she saw it. It was, a hakama similar to Idios, the same colors, but with flames on the bottom of the pants. Do you want it Naruto-sama Hinako asked, looking down at the excited boy. Yeah. But it's too expensive, Naruto said, hanging his head and pointing at the ridiculously high price. Hinako whistled then giggled. That's okay Naruto-sama. The price isn't a problem. You can have whatever you want. She said, seeing Naruto look up with something different in his eyes. I didn't mean it like that. I meant I don't want to become one of those spoiled snobs like Sasuke Chiha. Naruto said, folding his arms across his tiny chest. Idio walked in just soon enough to hear the conversation. Inoichi and Choza laughed when they heard the crack about Sasuke, making Naruto turn in surprise. Idio looked on at his nephew with pride. That's very noble of you, Naruto. How about this, think of it as a present to welcome you back to your home, he said, shrugging his arms and advancing towards them. Naruto pondered this for a moment, then nodded vigorously, making Shikaku give a slight smile and hide a big one. Good. Hanako, would you go pay for the outfit please? I will explain to Naruto the situation, Idio said, taking down the Hakama and handing it to Hanako. She nodded and left to pay for Naruto's new outfit. Okay Naruto, what would you say if I said I'm taking you home, Idio said, kneeling down to be at eye level with Naruto. I have a home Naruto said in a disbelieving voice. Idio gave a sad smile to the boy and nodded. Naruto teared up and said, let's go he flung his arms around Idio's neck and again mixed tears of joy with laughter. They must have been so cruel to him here, Shibi thought, as he too smiled sadly at the scene in front of them. Everyone was, mentally slapping themselves for not doing anything about the boy's welfare. They knew the Hyuga clan head Hiyashi Hyuga tried to adopt him, but was, denied by the elders of the council. Idio sama I think I know of another clan that would be willing to join you to go to Whirlpool. And this one will really piss off the council. Joza said, getting smirks from everyone who knew where he was, going with this. Upon hearing piss off the council Idio's ears were wide open and listening. Who? Any chance to screw with him I'll take he said, turning around to face Joza. Joza smirked and said, the Hyuga. When Naruto heard that name, he became even more cheery. Really? Gramps Hiyashi is gonna come too he said with a bright and hopeful smile on his face. Was that man nice to you, Naruto Idio said with a raised eyebrow and his head cocked to one nod, and Idio turned back to Choza. Then we will definitely invite them. Everyone except the Hyuga elders. He said, getting raised eyebrows from everyone except Shikaku, who understood completely. It's no secret the troublesome elders had a part to play in Naruto's treatment. If you ask me, getting rid of the Hyuga elders is one of the smartest things anyone could do. That cage bird seal is such a drag, without the elders it would be gone. Shikaku said lazily. Oh yeah I didn't even think about that. I just didn't want them to come cause their snobs and would get really annoying. Idio said, trying to figure out why he didn't think of such an obvious thing. Everyone, including Naruto, sweat dropped at Idio's cluelessness. Idio-sama, I have purchased the outfit for Naruto-sama as you requested. Hanako said, walking up to the group. Thank you Hanako. Here you are Naruto, go put it on in the dressing room. Idio said, giving Naruto the Hakama and pointing in the direction of the dressing rooms. Naruto nodded and ran off to put on his new clothes. Anako followed after him, trying to keep it up. Aiko, go inform Hiyashi Hayuga of our offer to join us. Idio said, turning and sitting down on a bench awaiting Naruto's return. Aiko nodded and vanished from view of the others. As Aiko approached the Hayuga compound, he was stopped by a guard at the front gates. State your business, please, sir. The guard said, holding out his palm to stop Aiko. I seek an immediate audience with Hiyashi Hayuga. Aiko said, stopping short of the man's outstretched hand. Wait here please. The guard said, opening the gate and walking through. A few moments later, he emerged with a man in a white robe following close behind him. Who are you and why do you wish to see me? Hiyashi said, putting his arms behind his back. Aiko bowed low and said, it regards Naruto Uzumaki sama, so if we could speak in private. Hiyashi's eyes widened and he quickly shooed the guard away, leaving him and Aiko standing there alone. What is it that has to do with young Naruto? Is he alright Hiyashi said, his voice betraying a little concern. Yes, Naruto-sama is more than alright. His uncle Idio Uzumaki of the Seven Deadly Sins has come to take him home to Whirlpool. Aiko said. Hiyashi was shocked, he didn't expect anything like this on his schedule today. What does this have to do with me Hiyashi said, raising an eyebrow in confusion. We would like to extend an invitation towards the Hyuga clan to join us in our departure. 
Nara, Yamanaka, Akamichi, and Aviram have decided to come with us to Whirlpool. This invitation is valid for all of your clan, except the elders. If you cannot accept these terms, then the invitation is void. Iko said, getting a shocked reaction from Hiashi. Hiashi weighed the options as he thought about this. They already have some of the strongest clans with them. And if war were to break out, we would definitely be killed if we didn't go with them. Hiashi thought, as his face had a far off look in his eyes. He looked up at the patient samurai and said, Me and my clan, save the elders, will go with you to your country. Shikaku watched as Naruto walked excitedly with his uncle towards a hotel they were going to be staying at while they were still here. He couldn't help but smile at the happy boy and remember the day of his birth. Flashback, Shikaku, Inoichi, Choza, and Shibi stood on the roof, watching the fight with the Kaiubi unfold before them. We need to get down there, or the village will be destroyed Choza yielded as he started to run off the roof, but was, stopped by Shikaku's hand on his shoulder. No Choza. We need to wait for the Hokage's orders. Dottie said, looking sternly into the Akimichi's eyes. Toza let out a sigh of defeat and stood straight, looking over the carnage that was, the hidden leaf. Inoichi's head suddenly shot up and he yelled, now all the members of each of their clans yelled a battle cry and started charging into the battle. The Akimichis were in front, expanding their bodies to those of boulders. The Mankas were jumping along the rooftops, awaiting the move they needed to make. The Naras ran onto the streets and in alleyways, effectively surrounding the Kaiubi. The Naras combined their shadow strangle jutsu into one ball under the Kaiubi. The giant fox looked down in interest as the shadows came to life and danced like tentacles. They suddenly shot up and ensnared Kaiubi, making him freeze in his tracks. Choza Shikaku yelled, obviously struggling to keep the beast at bay. Toza nodded and his body expanded to the size of Kaiubi, he ran at the fox and reined him with his shoulder. Kaiubi reared back as Shikaku released a, but then found himself on the ground looking up at a giant spinning ball that was, Choza Akimichi. Choza landed on Kaiubi with great force, spinning his body like a wrecking ball and plumbing Kaiubi. Kaiubi thrust out his chest, sending Choza's spinning body flying. Kaiubi slowly got up and roared in anger at the damage he was given. Inoichi saw this as his chance and signaled all the ninja by entering their minds. Everyone, attack with your strength now everyone heard in their minds. They nodded and began forming hand seals. Billions of fireballs shot towards Kaiubi, mixed with various other weapons. They all hit the fox with explosive force, sending him flying and landing on his back. The ninja moved in to finish the job when they were stopped by what they saw on the top of his head. The fourth Hokage, Minato Namikas, stood on top of the Kaiubi's head, running through a long series of hand seals. He slammed his hand down on Kaiubi's head. There was a giant yellow flash and they were gone, both Kaiubi and Minato. Shikaku stood there stunned, wondering how even the fourth could have teleported something so large. Just then, Inoichi entered his mind and relayed a message to him given by Minato. Shikaku Minato told us to do something very important. He told me, Choza, and Shibi. Now I need you to know. The fourth son was, just born, his name is Naruto Uzumaki. He wanted us to inform Whirlpool of his existence when he turned six. Only if we think it's right though. So until then, he'll live in the village, and when he turns six, we might or might not inform his uncle. Inoichi said in Shikaku's mind. Shikaku nodded in understanding and closed his eyes to think. Doza, Shibi, come over here. Shikaku said, motioning them to near him. They did so and stood there patiently while Shikaku closed his eyes again. We don't need to think about this any more than we already have. When Naruto turns six, I'm informing Whirlpool. He said, earning shocked looks from the two men. But Shikaku, don't we need to think about this more? Choza asked his friend. Shikaku shook his head and looked over to Shibi who nodded, understanding why the sudden decision was made. It is because Naruto will be treated badly isn't it Shibi said, saying it more as a statement than a question. Choza sighed and wondered why he had to be stuck with the geniuses of the village right now. That's not all, I'm going with them. Shikaku said. What? What do you mean you're going with them? Choza yelled in confusion as to why Shikaku would want to leave Konoha. Because certain members of our council were responsible for this attack, along with an unknown man in a mask. Shikaku said, taking a seat on the dirt floor and resting his head on his hand. Toza looked shocked and baffled at this accusation. How do you know he said, crossing his arms across his chest in disbelief. Because Minato told me about Inoichi. You two ended it too early so you didn't hear him say it. I have no intention of being a part of a corrupt village Choza, and neither should you. I have to think about my family if something like this happens again. Shikaku said in a tone that told Choza to drop it. Toza sighed and said, fine, then I'm coming too. Shibi nodded in agreement as he too wanted no part in something like that again. Then it is settled. The Aburam, Nara, Akamichi, and Yamanaka clans will leave with Whirlpool when the time comes. Shibi said, sitting down next to Shikaku. Choza nodded and sat down with the other two. 
I just hope this goes well. He said, laying down on his back and looking up at the smoke filled sky. And flashback, Chikaku frowned, trying to figure out which council members would do that. He was already pretty sure, but didn't have anything to present as evidence to the Hokage to persecute was also pretty sure that one of the three was killed by Idio that very day. He shook his head, trying to get his mind off of it. Uncle Shikaku, what are you doing Naruto said, tugging on the man's pant leg. Shikaku was snapped out of his thoughts and he looked down at the boy, a smile coming across his face. You know Naruto, I have a son your age. I'm sure you two would be pretty good friends. Joza said, now walking beside Shikaku. He looked over to Inoichi and said, Hey Inoichi, do you think your daughter Ino would like Naruto? Ha. Ah. She might like him, but I'm not too sure about the other way around. She certainly takes after her mother. And she can scream like a Haruno, Inoichi said, cringing at the thought of his daughter throwing a temper tantrum. Joza laughed at his friend's expense, Shikaku nodded in agreement as he knew it was completely true. Naruto looked at them confused and said, I don't really care. I just want some friends my age a large foxy smile came across his face at the thought of having more friends. The boy's outburst silenced any talking out of the group as they all looked at him with a sad smile. Well if you're a tree Uzumaki, you will learn the art of pranking Idio said, a mischievous grin coming across his face. Everyone except Naruto groaned, making Idio turn. What he said, raising an eyebrow in confusion. Just wait until you fall victim to one of Naruto's pranks. The troublesome kids are relentless, Shikaku said, hanging his head as he remembered the tons of paint-filled balloons raining down on him. Doza laughed and said, Haha ha, I remember the one where he made the Hokage feign from blood loss from his harem, Jutsu and Noichi also let out a laugh, remembering seeing Sarutobi chasing a laughing Naruto through town. Idio looked down at his chuckling nephew with proud eyes and a beaming smile. He cried in I'm tears and said, That's my nephew. Naruto laughed as he was, picked up and placed on his uncle's shoulders, resting his hands on the man's head. Hanako walked up to Idio and bowed. The arrangements have been made at the Hotel Idio-sama. I purchased the best available room for you and Naruto-sama. Me and Aiko will be staying in the room next to yours. She said, raising her head and straightening her back. Idio nodded and thanked her before turning to the rest of the group. I suggest you all go home and inform your clans we are leaving. He said, seeing Shikaku shake his head. They already know we are leaving. It was a real bother at first, but I convinced them it was for the best. We're ready to leave whenever you are. Shikaku said, lazily scratching the back of his head. Doza, Inoichi, and Shibi all nodded as they had done the same on the day they decided to leave. Idio was shocked and impressed at the group's thoroughness. He bid them good night as he left with a waving Naruto on his shoulders. Bye guys. See you tomorrow Naruto yelled back at his friends. They returned the farewell and went their separate ways to inform their clans that it was finally time to leave. Shikaku Nara walked the path to his home, wondering exactly how he was going to tell them it was time to leave. His son would be easy to convince, because he was just like him. Lazy, smart, and willing to go with just about anything. He chuckled to himself at the thought of what his son would say. Shikaku reached out and opened the gates to the Nara compound, walking past the guards and other ninja that were mingling in the evening sunset. Troublesome dot dot he heard someone say from a hallway on his left, making a turn towards it already knowing who it was. Shikamaru, we need to talk. Shikaku said, walking up behind his son and placing a hand on his shoulder. Shikamaru turned at the sound of his father's voice and nodded lazily. Shikaku led his son to his personal study and locked the door behind them. All right son, take a seat and we can begin. He said, motioning to the pillow on the other side of the knee-high table. Shikamaru sat down with a thump and put his elbow on the table, resting his head in the palm of his hand. All right, we're leaving Kanoha. Shikaku said, earning the most surprised look from Shikamaru he ever got. Why? What happened Shikamaru said, sitting up straight and listening intently. What happened was, Naruto Uzumaki. We are leaving with him to Whirlpool in the morning, as well as the Amanaka, Aburam, Hayuga, and Akamichi clans. Shikaku said. Shikamaru visibly relaxed when he heard his two best friends' clans were coming with them. Okay, so why tell me this, and not the rest of the clan he said, again resting his head on his hand lazily. Because the rest of the clan already knows. We decided this on the day of the Kaiubi attack. Shikaku said, mimicking his son's action. Shikamaru nodded slowly and said, so we're leaving the village huh? Troublesome we'll have to walk a lot, won't we? Shikaku shook his head and smiled inwardly. No, we set up a carriage for you, Naruto, Choji, Ino, Shino, and the Hayuga heiress Hinata. Dati said. Shikamaru sighed in relief and then got another question in his head. Just who is Naruto anyway? I heard about him being some kind of demon he said. Shikaku stiffened, and his features suddenly went from relaxed to hardened. No Shikamaru. He's not a demon. Don't listen to those terrible rumors everyone is talking about, because they aren't true. 
He is a kind and gentle boy who was mistreated his entire life for something he had no control over. If anything, he's a hero to this village. He said, crossing his arms across his chest. Shikamaru noticed how serious his father got and decided to drop it before this got ugly. Alright, so we're leaving. That's fine, I don't really care so long as it's not too much of a bother, Shikamaru said, laying down on his back with his hands behind his head. Shikaku nodded in agreement and dismissed his son, telling him to get ready for the coming day. Toza, Inoichi, and Shino's explanations went similar to Shikaku's. Once Choji and Ino heard that they were going together with Shikamaru, they accepted that they had to leave and didn't put up an argument. Shino saw the logical side of them leaving and agreed without complication. Hiashi's explanation however went a little different. W what? Why do we h have to leave daddy a teary-eyed Hinata asked. Hiashi let out a sad sigh and said, because my daughter. If we do not leave then we are in danger of war, which we will lose. And because I must atone for something I neglected to do for a friend. Hinata's eyes began to shed tears, and she started to cry softly. B but this is our H home. What about T the rest of the C clan she stuttered, still looking into her father's eyes. Do not worry Hinata, the clan is coming with us too. All except the elders of course. Hiashi said in a calm but serious voice. Hinata relaxed but was still confused as to why they had to leave the elders. Why leave the elders daddy? D don't we need them she said, still choking on a few tears. No my daughter, we do not need them. If they are not with us, then I can finally get rid of that cursed cage bird seal. Hiashi said, getting Hinata's eyes to go as wide as dinner plates. Ah really? You're gonna get rid of it? Ye Hinata said, tackling Hiashi in a hug. Hiashi let out a small chuckle and nodded as he got to his feet with Hinata in his arms. Come now Hinata, we must prepare for the coming day. He said, opening the paper-like doors of his study and walking down the hall towards his daughter's room. So where are we going daddy Hinata asked as they entered a room. We are going to Whirlpool Country with a boy named Naruto. I think you will like him. Hiashi said, setting her down on her bed and bringing out a suitcase. What's he like? Is he nice? Hinata asked as she watched her father pack her things. Hiashi smiled and turned towards his daughter. He is a very nice Hinata. And very energetic, outgoing, he is like the opposite of Shikamaru Nara. He said. Hinata giggled as she imagined what this Naruto boy could be like. I wonder if he's cute. Hinata blushed at her last odd and mentally scolded herself. Hiashi noticed this and smirked at his daughter's expense. Oh and Hinata, you must not tell the elders this. If they find out, something very bad could happen to all of those that are going. He said in a stern voice that told Hinata he wasn't kidding. She nodded and said, I won't father. Hiashi accepted her answer and continued packing. Naruto jumped up and down on the bed in the room, one thought going through his mind. So big the room him and his uncle Lydia were in was the biggest room he had ever been in. It made the room he had in the orphanage look like a small bathroom compared to this. Hey uncle, why's our room so big Naruto said, jumping over to the bed parallel to his and sitting cross-legged. Because this was one of the only rooms they had available. Plus Idio said, walking over to the window shades and opening them. It has a very nice view. Naruto got up and walked to where his uncle was, attending. Sure enough, it was a very nice view. Their hotel room looked over the village of Kanoha, stopping at the clear side of the Hokage Monument Mountain. The night sky is shown beautifully over the Hokage's heads, making the stars shine brightly and the moon illuminate the buildings below. Wow Naruto said as he stared wide-eyed out at the sight before him. Idio chuckled and ruffled the boy's hair, making him laugh as well. Come on Naruto, get to bed. You have a big day tomorrow. Dottie said, picking up Naruto and tossing him on the bed. Naruto laughed as he was thrown down onto the soft bed. It's too early uncle. I can't fall asleep now he said, crossing his arms and pouting in protest. Just lay down and close your eyes. You'll be out in no time. Idio said, pushing Naruto's head back with his index finger. HMPH, fine. Naruto said. He closed his eyes and almost instantly, faint snoring could be heard coming from him, signaling he was fast asleep. Just like his mother. Idio thought as he smiled down at his sleeping nephew. The morning came a lot slower than Naruto wanted. He was up since five and had to wait for another three hours laying in his bed staring at the ceiling. Once his uncle got up he was jumping up and down and saying, can we go yet? Can we? Can we? He was yelling it over and over, acting like a little kid in a candy store. He was a little too excited to meet kids his own age and make some friends. All right, all right, I'm up. Just let me get dressed properly. Idio said, groggily sitting up and getting out of bed. Okay, Naruto, let's go meet up with the others. He said after he had gotten dressed into his normal hakama. Naruto nodded vigorously and was already out of the door by the time Idio picked up his pack. Idio sighed and thought, just like his father. Once he was ready, they continued on their way to the docks to meet up with the other clans. Naruto was practically dragging Idio by the hand all the way there. 
He stopped dead in his tracks when he saw all the people waiting for them. Idio whistled and said, whoa, didn't expect so many people to show up. Naruto nodded in agreement and looked to his uncle in concern. Will they all be able to come he said, a little worried about losing some potential friends. Idio smiled and nodded down at his nephew. Yes Naruto, they will all come. Only one clan will have to ride on the boats back to Whirlpool with the samurai. Who do you think wouldn't mind he said, looking around at the groups of people. Naruto looked over at Nara first. A lot of the men were laying down and looking up at the clouds, lazy looks on their faces. He shook his head in disapproval and didn't think they would voluntarily do it. Then he looked over to the Akimichis. His head automatically shook as he thought, they might sink it his gaze turned over to the Aburam, and his head nodded in approval. Naruto tugged on his uncle's sleeve and pointed to the Aburams. Them Dadi said. Idio's head nodded in agreement, proud that his nephew could determine the best candidates. Naruto's eyes drifted to the left, and they lit up at the sight of Hiyash Hayuga talking with another clan member. Naruto ran towards his friend and yelled, Gramps Hiyashi a vein on Hiyashi's forehead bulged and he turned and yelled, who the hell saw but he never finished as Naruto jumped onto the man, making him stumble back a few feet. Hiyashi's mood brightened when he saw who had called him Gramps. He hugged Naruto and said, ah hello Naruto. I trust you have been well Naruto, pulled away and nodded excitedly, happy that one of his first friends was coming with them. Someone can actually get away with calling you that the man that Hiyashi was talking to said. Hiyashi scowled at him and said, yes ko. But I would advise you not to repeat it as Naruto is the only one I wouldn't skin for saying that Dadi said, eyes twitching when he saw ko was trying to suppress a smirk. Daddy, eyes this and Naruto kun a small voice said to Naruto and Hiyashi's left. Hiyashi turned and smiled at his daughter Hinata. Yes Hinata, this is the boy I was telling you about Dadi said, stepping aside so she could see Naruto clearly. She blushed lightly at the sight of him and nervously pressed her index fingers together. Naruto ran over to her, coming to a skidding stop and extending his hand. An ear-to-ear -ear grin made its way onto his face, and he said, Hey. I'm Naruto. Who are you? Hinata jumped and gave a slight eep as she looked down nervously. H Hinata H Hai Uga dot she said barely above a whisper. Naruto looked questioningly at her with a raised eyebrow. He saw he blush and he said, Hey are you feeling okay? You look into red dot he brought up his hand and placed it on her forehead, making her blush even more. Her eyes widened as she realized something. I just met him, but I already like him. Oh no, he's touching me she thought as the world went dark around her. Hmm. Hinata. Oi. Hinata Naruto yelled as he tried to get her to talk. Suddenly Hinata went limp and fell to the ground. Naruto started to panic as he shook Hinata and yelled into her ear, trying to get her to wake up. Hiyashi and Ko blinked for a few seconds before realizing what happened and started laughing. Ko had to hold his sides from his laughter as he dropped to his knees. The Ashi was the first to recover and still chuckling said, well, I wasn't expecting this to happen. Ko nodded in agreement before going over and picking Hinata up. Don't worry Naruto-sama, she'll be fine. I'll take her to the carriage for her to recover while we wait for you, and the others. Ko said, walking off with Hinata in his arms. Naruto blinked a couple times before he turned to Hiyashi and said, why do people keep calling me that Hiyashi chuckled at the boy's denseness? Because you are the prince of Whirlpool Naruto. People wish to show you proper respect and gain your favor Dadi said, placing a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto crossed his arms and pouted defiantly. I don't like it. It feels too weird Dadi said as he looked around at everyone present. I know, but you will get used to it. I had to go through the same thing Dot Hiyashi said, looking at his fellow clansmen. Naruto made a grunting noise, and Hiyashi chuckled. Just then Idio walked over and Hiyashi corrected him posture. Hello, Yuzuki-sama. He said, bowing so low he was a perfect right angle. Good morning, Hiyashi sama. Idio said, giving a less low bow. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Idio and said, Your cage. Wasn't there only five? Idio gave a light chuckle and said, No, Naruto. There are six cage, but the Yuzukage is a little bit different and special. Only Yuzumaki can become the Yuzukage. Naruto's eyes lit up as he suddenly got excited. So does that mean I'm gonna be the Yuzukage? Idio smiled and ruffled his nephew's spiky hair. Possibly Naruto. He said, making Naruto groan in disappointment. Alright, it's time to go. Naruto, go over to that carried over there and ride in it. The other children should be there or shortly be there. Idio said. Naruto nodded excitedly and ran over to the carriage. I hope they get along. Idio said to no one in particular. Hishi nodded in agreement and started to walk to the carriage where he and the other clan heads would be in. Naruto sat on the far side of the carriage, looking out the window with a far off look in his eyes. The carriage was, by no means small, it was, actually huge. There was, room for people to walk around, and the benches were more like couches. They were lined with a red trim and burnt orange cushions. The mahogany wood underneath was, covered by a veil-like piece of fabric that hung from the end of the bench. 
The floor was carpeted with a plain white color, the Uzumaki clan symbol in the middle of it in a bright red color. Naruto gave a deep sigh as he rested his head in his hand. I hope they like me. He thought, letting out another sigh to calm his nerves. What if they're like the grown ups? Maybe they'll hate me even though I didn't do anything wrong. Did I alone? Tear made its way down his cheek as his worries made their way into his brain. Hey, are you okay? A voice from behind Naruto said. He spun his head around, the tear flying off his face and onto the floor. In the doorway stood a lazy looking boy, his hands in his pockets and his eyes half closed. The surprised look on his face changed to that of a sad one. He leaned back in his seat and looked up at the ceiling. Not really. He said. The boy sighed and walked over to the other side of Naruto, sitting down so he was, facing him. Troublesome. What's wrong? He said, mimicking Naruto's poor posture. I just hope the other kids like me, the ones that are going on this trip with me, Naruto said, again looking slightly sad. The boy's eyebrow raised in interest at the blonde in front of him. Well, I hold nothing against you. So I guess you could say I like you. The boy said, sitting up slightly. Naruto's eyes shot open as he realized who this boy was. He sat up quickly and grinned, holding out his hand. Hey, I'm Naruto Naruto said, the grin seeming to grow wider if such a thing was possible. The boy took a hand out of his pocket and lazily shook Naruto's hand. I'm Shikamaru. Shikamaru said, putting his hand back into its pocket. By the way, why are we worried about us liking you he said with obvious interest in his voice. Naruto's face again got the far off look to it as his grin gradually faded. He was about to explain when a voice from the doorway stopped him from continuing. Come on Choji. We're about to leave a girl yelled out the doorway at an unseen person. I'm coming Ino. I'm just grabbing some chips for our new friend Choji yelled back. Ino made a grunting noise and tapped her foot impatiently, waiting for Choji to hurry up and get there. Naruto studied the girl with appraising eyes, or at least what he could from behind her. She had long platinum blonde hair that reached down past the small of her back, and her skin was a fair color, not pale, but also not very tan. She was dressed in a purple outfit that Naruto thought was rather skimpy considering her age. When she turned and saw Naruto, Ino let out a very light blush, but it vanished quickly as she smiled at him. Shikamaru was the only one who noticed this and lazily grunted in amusement. Ino walked over to where Naruto was and sat next to him, just a few inches away. Hi, I'm Ino. Are you that Naruto guy that we're going with Ino said, putting out her hand. Naruto nodded and smiled at her, taking her hand in a shake. Ino again did the same blush, and again, only Shikamaru who slightly smirked at her expense noticed. Ino gave a death glare at Shikamaru, and the smirk vanished from his face, replaced by slight fear. They all noticed a slight shift of the carriage as it tilted to one side. They all looked to the doorway to see a plump boy standing there. He wore a wide grin over his face and held about 10 bags of chips wrapped in his arms. He walked over next to Shikamaru and sat down, again causing the carriage to tilt in his general direction. I'm Choji Choji said, struggling to keep the bags from falling on the ground. Naruto smiled and said, Hi, I'm Naruto. The carriage started moving and Choji grinned, picked up three bags, and tossed them to Naruto, Ino, and Shikamaru. All three caught them without a problem, but Naruto looked at him with a confused look on his face. No one except Tuchi and his uncle gave him anything. He looked over to Shikamaru who explained, he only gives his food to his friends. Naruto looked over to Choji who smiled and nodded then back down at the bag in his hands. Friends Naruto mumbled quietly, but everyone heard. Shikamaru's eyes widened in realization at what this meant. Naruto, what were you gonna say earlier? Before Ino came in he said, obviously interested in the matter. His interest made Ino and Choji sit at the edge of their seats. Hardly anything makes Shikamaru like this, so they knew it had to be something very interesting. Naruto's smile faded and he sat back in his seat, letting his body sink into the cousins. Nothing really. Just that I never had any friends, so I was afraid that you guys would hate me like the rest of the village. He said, making Ino look really confused. What do you mean you had no friends? Didn't your parents set up a play day or take you to the park? Choji said, stopping his eating for a moment, much to the surprise of Ino and Shikamaru. Naruto shook his head and said, never had any. I was an orphan from day one. None of the villagers liked me so I was never adopted. And whenever I tried to play with the other kids, the parents would call me a demon and kick me away. Most of the time literally dot by. This time, everyone save Shikamaru was in tears. Shikamaru was trying his hardest not to let one fall, but Ino and Choji weren't so strong. Ino threw herself onto Naruto in a bone-crushing hug, not wanting to let go anytime soon. Choji jumped from his seat and flung himself at the two, landing on them and crying with a hug. Um. Choji. I think you're crushing them. Shikamaru said, pointing at the forms of Naruto and Ino. Choji get off Ino said, obvious malice in her voice. Choji gulped and jumped off of them, backing away from the rising form of Ino. 
S sorry Eno he said, frantically waving his hand in front of himself. Choji come here. I'm gonna kick you. Eno said, a fist violently raised as she stalked towards him. Choji gulped and a fist came crashing into his face, sending him sprawling to the other side of the carriage. Naruto and Shikamaru scooted down as far as they could away from Ino, who was, on Choji's stomach mercilessly. Does she always do that Naruto asked, pointing shakily at the pair in front of them. Almost every day. It's either me or Choji. Troublesome woman Shikamaru said, sinking back into his chair. Naruto chuckled at the crack about Ino and sat back in the cushions. Ino, who was now done beating on Choji, smiled when she heard Naruto's chuckle and sat back down next to him. So Naruto, are you feeling better she said, still smiling at the blonde. Naruto smiled and nodded at her. I think I speak for all of us when I say you're our friend Naruto. Shikamaru said as Choji sat down next to him. Naruto let out a sad smile and a sigh of relief. So how long will it take to get there Choji said, rubbing a sore spot on his head from where Ino hit him. Naruto shrugged and said, it should take like three days. As long as we aren't interrupted or anything like that. As if on cue, there was an explosion in front of their carriage that splintered the wood. The four children inside had shocked looks on their faces as they looked towards the direction of the explosion. What was that Ino said, opening the door of the carriage and running out. Before Naruto could run out to stop her, she was sent flying back inside unconscious. Her prone form crashed into Naruto who luckily caught her before she hit the wall. A man with a bandaged face and arm walked into the room, followed by four men in grey cloaks and masks looking over the occupants. Come with me children, we have come to save you from these people. He said, extending his hand towards Naruto with a sick and evil grin on his face. Naruto's face contorted in rage as he lunged himself at the man who hurt his friend. He tackled him and sent them both to the ground and out of the carriage. Anzo Sama one of the men called, running out after the pair. He picked up Naruto by the scruff of his neck and delivered a kick to his abdomen, sending him skidding along the road. Naruto Shikamaru said, moving at a surprising fast pace and catching the boy. Before they could react, another one of the men appeared and was about to strike them down with his kunai. The boys shut their eyes and waited for a strike that would never come. Human boulder they heard someone yell. A giant spinning red ball came out of nowhere and smashed into the cloaked figure, sending him spinning into two of the others. The ball stopped spinning to reveal Choza Akimichi in a bath-ready stance. Are you kids okay he said, turning his head towards Naruto and Shikamaru. We're fine, but Ino's knocked out in the carriage. Shikamaru said, getting a nod of agreement from Naruto. What is the meaning of this said Idio, who was, now standing by Choza's side. They heard a dark chuckle from Danzo before he said, well I couldn't let any of you get away with taking half our clans, now could I Idio's features twisted in rage as he drew his sword. You do realize, this means war. See what I did there? Idio said, his jaw hardening. So be it. The leaf will crush you and your precious village. Danzo said, making a hand signal. When he did this, about 20 more cloaked men appeared, all wearing similar masks and hoods. Now you will see why they call me Wrath. Idio said. Choza, get the kids back and don't let anyone else interfere with this fight. It will only danger themselves. Choza nodded and picked up Naruto and Shikamaru, much to Naruto's protest. He ran them back into the carriage and locked the door, making them stay where they were. Once he did this, he ran over to the other forces and told them to stay back and await further orders. Idio stared down Danzo and the rest of his men, then, without warning, vanished. The Warhawk's eyes widened as he looked around the area, trying to locate Idio. His ears heard the sound of steel slicing through flesh. He turned quickly to see that already half of his men were laying on the ground, dead, dismembered, or both. Idio stood in the middle of the carnage, wiping blood from his sword after taking it out of a man's chest. Idio jumped back and went through a series of hand seals. Water style. Whirl Dragon Jutsu he yelled. The water behind him began to move and quickly formed a huge whirlpool the size of a Mino village. From the whirlpool a dragon emerged, but not a normal water dragon. This dragon was much bigger and had more distinct features. Its whole body was swirling faster than the eye could see, and the head stared at Danzo with cold, hatred-filled eyes. The remaining man looked at it with horror, wondering what in the hell they got themselves into. The dragon started to coil around Idio, submerging him in water. Then without warning, it struck. The remaining men were engulfed in the dragon's mouth along with Danzo, leaving only a trail of water in its wake. Danzo was the only survivor of the attack as he fell to the earth with a loud thud. Idio appeared in front of the old man, looking down at him with malice. Tell your hookage this. Your actions have led to war. If they beg, I might let the innocent live. But no matter what happens, I will have your head in a spike. He said, turning and walking towards his nephew's carriage. Danzo cursed him and vanished, leaving only his words behind. Idio opened the door to the carriage and walked in, seeing Naruto sitting cross-legged on the floor and Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji sitting on the bench to his left. Are you all okay he said, walking in and inspecting the damage done. 
They all nodded and Naruto stood up, looking at his uncle with fire in his eyes. Can you teach me how to do that he asked excitedly. His uncle looked at him and said, maybe when you're older. We're leaving immediately to avoid any more conflict. I'll see you all when we set up camp later. Dottie walked out of the carriage, much to Naruto's disappointment. This is gonna be fun. Idio thought, a smile creeping across his face as he walked over to his carriage. The rest of Naruto's journey went on without a hitch. They traveled during the day and set up camp at night. After the incidents with Danzo, Shikaku and Inoichi started guarding the kid's carriage under orders from Idio. About half a day after the incident, Hinata joined them in the carriage after recovering from close contact with Naruto. She sat on Naruto's left side, while a rather jealous Ino sat on his right. Naruto being Naruto, of course didn't notice the jealousy of Ino. But pretty much everyone else did, including Hinata. She couldn't understand why someone as pretty as Ino would be jealous of her. Was it her by Akigen? Was it her being close to Naruto? She didn't know, all she knew is she didn't want to risk losing a new friend. Okay everyone, we're about 10 minutes away from Yuzubakur. If you didn't know, that's the hidden village of Whirlpool Country, and where we'll be living. Idio said, stepping into the still moving carriage and sitting on one of the benches. Hey Uncle Idio, what's it like there? Is it big? Are the people nice? Naruto said, scooting to the edge of his seat and looking at his uncle expectantly. Idio chuckled and curled his finger on his chin with a thoughtful expression playing on his face. Well, yes, it's big. Imogen Kanoha, only five times bigger Dotty said, causing all the eyes in the carriage to widen. That's huge Choji said, waving his arms in the air while holding a bag of chips. Idio chuckled and nodded, completely agreeing with the boy. Yes it is. I'll tell you more about it while you're learning academics. Meanwhile, Naruto, I would like you to meet your teachers. Idio said, focusing his attention towards the spiky blonde head across from him. Teachers? What teachers Naruto asked, genuine confusion playing on his face. Well, you'll need to be trained of course. You're gonna get stronger, and of course smarter. All of you are. Naruto, I'll speak with you about your training later. Now, it seems we're here. Idio said, looking out the window and seeing they were now crossing a large bridge. Naruto and the others crowded around the few windows there were in the carriage, trying to see what awaited them outside. They gasped at what they saw, letting their jaws hit the ground below. There, in all its glory, was Yuzubakur. The city was, surrounded by a cliff face seemingly made out of marble. Each rock was, glistening as if it were wet, reflecting the water below on its smooth glass-like surface. Speaking of the water, it was, a crystal blue color. The beauty of it was, indescribable and it looked almost alive. Large and small whirlpools surrounded the island-like city, looking like they were protecting it from danger. Naruto noticed movement in the water below and leaned in closer trying to see what was, down there. A scaly blue serpent-like body rose and quickly sunk back into the water, disappearing into one of the larger whirlpools. Naruto said, leaning out of the window even more. Naruto be careful, you could fa Idio started to say, but was, cut off by his nephew's feet leaving the window. Naruto he, yelled, running over and reaching out for the boy. He caught his foot and sighed in relief, pulling his hand up. Everyone's sweat dropped despite the situation. In Idio's hand was, a sandal. Naruto's sandals. Unfortunately, it was, just that dot crap dot dot Idio swore under his breath, looking out the window to see a falling Naruto. Just as Idio was, about to perform a that would catch his nephew, he stopped mid-seal. Everyone in the carriage looked at him in confusion, wondering why he wasn't helping Naruto. They looked down and saw Naruto falling straight for one of the huge whirlpools that were surrounding the city. At about a hundred feet from the surface, something shot out of the water, effectively slowing Naruto's descent. To everyone it was, a blue blur, until it suddenly came to a stop. There, out of the middle of the whirlpool, rose a sight they never thought they would see. A huge blue serpent-like body was, swaying slightly in the water. In the middle of the body there were arms, small in comparison to the rest of the beast, but large nonetheless. Streaks of blood red went up the base of its neck and stretched to surround its eyes and half the spikes on its neck. The spikes themselves looked as though they were made of pure water, almost completely transparent and seeming to move. It had an elongated face so it looked like a snout, bright and dark blue scales glistening in the sunlight. Naruto sat in the middle of said snout, looking into the ocean blue eyes that were much like his own. You're awesome Naruto yelled, standing up and looking at the rest of the beast in front of him. The beast closed his eyes and did what looked like a bow to Naruto. Thank you for blessing me with your words my prince. It said, again straightening and opening its eyes. Naruto gave it a surprised look and said, you can talk the serpent chuckled, his low voice and moving body made the water below ripple. Yes. My name is Yumiko. I am a dragon of the sea, created by Kami himself. I am forever at your service, Prince of Whirlpool. Yumiko said, again bowing his head respectively, while trying not to make Naruto fall off. Why do you keep calling me Prince? I have a name you know. Naruto said, folding his arms and plopping down cross legged on the dragon's snout. 
forgive me, my prince. May I be so bold as to ask for your most respected name Yumiko said, obvious worry in his voice. Naruto smiled brightly at Yumiko and said, Naruto Uzumaki, hey there. Oh yes, forgive me for not answering your question. I call you prince because you are the next in line to be Yuzukich. Me and my kin respect the Yuzumaki family greatly and will lay down our lives for you. Yumiko said, looking directly into the young blonde's eyes. Naruto sat up excitedly at the mention of Yuzukich. I'm gonna be Yuzukich out he yelled, pumping his fist into the air and cheering gleefully. Damn it Yuzimo. I wanted to say that they heard someone from on the bridge say. They looked up to see a comedic looking idiot waving his fist down at the dragon, a visible tick mark appearing on his forehead. My apologies Idiosama, but I am obligated to answer the questions Naruto-sama asks. Said and again worried Yuzimo. Idio sighed and motioned for Yumiko to rise onto the bridge. The dragon's body slithered up until his face was right by their carriage. The remaining kids jumped back to the far wall, amazed and yet terrified of the creature before them. Yumiko, change into your human form. Idio said, waving a hand at the children to signify they're frightened. Yumiko nodded and placed Naruto gently down onto the bridge. He closed his eyes and his body began to shrink. There was a bright blue flash, making everyone shield their eyes from the intensity. When they looked back, they saw a tall man standing where the dragon's head used to be. He had dark blue hair that fell straight, covering half his face and the same blue eyes as Naruto. He was wearing a blood-red muscle shirt and black ninja pants that were cut off right above his ankles. His feet were covered with black sandals, and his nails were painted a very dark burnt orange. The man bowed low to Naruto and Idio, then to the rest of the kids in the carriage. I apologize for scaring you children. He said, slowly rising into a standing position. So you're a dragon. That sounds troublesome. Shikamaru said being the first to recover from the initial shock. Cool Choji called out, stuffing a handful of chips into his face. Ino and Hinata could only do one thing out of their shock. They both fainted. The Hokage paced back and forth behind his desk, furious at the elder member of the council Danzo. Why did this have to happen? Why couldn't that idiot just leave it be he thought, taking a long puff of his pipe. He walked over to the accumulating pile of papers on his desk and picked up the first stack. He sighed deeply as he remembered what transpired within the council earlier that day. Flashback, Saratobi gathered the council to discuss the new budgets of the ninja, considering it didn't have to be split up as much. Then we all agree it shall go up 50% Saratobi asked, getting a wave of nods from around the room. Just as he was about to call the meeting, a limping old man walked in. He was soaked to the bone, and almost everyone immediately recognized him as Danzo. Danzo. What on earth happened to you asked a worried Himaru. Danzo waved his hand dismissively at the old woman and sat down at his seat. He turned to the Hokage and said, Hokage-sama, I believe we go to war with Yuzugakur. There was a collective gasp among all the council and Saratobi rose from his seat, effectively silencing them. For what reason do you propose this Danzo? Does it have to do with your current condition he said, just now realizing what the old war hawk looked like. Danzo nodded and said, yes Hokage-sama. My condition is because of Whirlpool Ninja, and my men's death is also because of them. Another gasp went through the room. And why would they do such a thing Danzo? What did you do to provoke them Saratobi asked, knowing full well that Danzo always had something to do with anything bad. I simply tried to convince them to bring back the ninja they stole from us. When I confronted them, the demon's uncle killed my man and injured me. Danzo said, as if it were the simplest thing in the world. Saratobi was about to yell at Danzo and order his death when he was interrupted by Himaru of the elders. Then war it shall be. He said, rising from his seat in a superior manner. Everyone besides Danzo looked at him like he was a complete lunatic. What do you mean by that? This is Danzo's wrongdoing, therefore he shall be punished. Saratobi said, folding his arms across his chest defiantly. Amaru shook his head and said, No, he will not, Hokage sama. If anything, he should be rewarded. The chorus of I went around the room, finally stopping at a smirking Danzo. Saratobi got a worried expression on his face. He couldn't go against the council if the vote was unanimous. All he could do was hope that war was far off in the future. Then flashback, saying Saratobi was pissed would be an understatement. He wanted to kill all the idiots that raised their hands right then and there, shutting them up forever. But unfortunately, he was Hokage and he couldn't lose more people than necessary. The only people that didn't raise their hands were Kakashi and the rest of the nine senseis, along with Iruka and Mizuki. I guess I have no choice. I have to try the last resort to prevent the inevitable dot thought the Hokage as he called in his Anbu agents. Bring me Kakashi Haddock and tell him I have a mission for him. Dottie said, getting a nod from the Anbu before he left. Within moments the silver-haired man was, standing in front of Saratobi, awaiting his orders. Kakashi, I want you to go to Yuzugakur and discuss a treaty with Idio Yuzumaki. 
Tell him that he may have whatever he wants from us to prevent the upcoming war. The Hokage said, taking another long inhale from his pipe. Kakashi looked shocked, and then a worried look came over his face. Okage sama, how do you know they will not just attack me the second they see me? They all know how Naruto was treated here. Even I want to kill people here for that. He said, trying to get out of the mission that was near suicidal. That is precisely why I am sending you Kakashi. You were one of the people who didn't hate Naruto and you are trusted there. So go, you have your mission. Siratobi said, stealing his gaze to let Kakashi know there was no room to argue. The copy ninja reluctantly nodded and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Unfortunately, Saratobi didn't know that Kakashi would never return to Konoha from his visit. Naruto excitedly ran circles around Yumiko as they neared the gates of Yuzugakur, asking him questions like how many of you are there? And can you fly? Everyone looked at Yumiko with amusement and sympathy. Almost all of them fell victim to Naruto's endless barrage of questions, ending in either them almost slitting their throats with a kunai or jumping into a nearby lake. In Nidio's case, it was throwing Naruto into a freezing cold lake. But that was his mistake, because once Naruto was out, he started planning the biggest prank of his life to play on his uncle. So far, it involved chickens, tar, a few pieces of rope, roller skates, and Yumiko. Yumiko, however, didn't mind all the questions. In fact, it looked like he enjoyed it. He answered all of them with a smile on his face, except the ones that involved body waste. Then he just looked confused. Once they reached the gate, Idio told him to either shut up or go flying off the bridge. Naruto of course chose the first option and stopped asking his ridiculous questions. I apologize to Naruto-sama, but I must bid you farewell for now. Yumiko said once they were about to enter the village. Naruto said, folding his arms across his chest and pouting. I can only be away from the ocean for so long. Unfortunately, that time is up so I must return. I wish you well in your stay here Naruto-sama. Farewell. Yumiko said, bound to Naruto and Idio and jumping off the bridge. Halfway down he turned into his dragon form again and swam to the whirlpool he came out of before. That was so cool. Naruto said, marveling at the beauty of the dragon. Idio nodded his agreement and motioned for them to follow. Naruto, go over there and hop on that horse. I'll be over in a minute. Idio said, pointing over at two identical white horses. Naruto nodded and ran over to the one on the left. A samurai helped him onto the horse and left with a low respectful bow. Naruto thanked him and patiently waited for his uncle to arrive by his side. Once he did, Idio motioned to the guards to open the giant marble gates to Yuzugakur. They opened painfully slowly for Naruto, but once they were cracked, everyone heard a roar of cheering. It started out quiet, but got louder and louder as the gates opened. Naruto and Idio were flanked by 20 samurai, Aiko leading the tent to the right, and Hinako leading the tent to the left. The rest of the group were behind Naruto and Idio as they rode on the horses through the main street of Yuzugakur. People filled every alley and every inch of the sidewalk, cheering and calling out to Naruto. Cheers like the prince has returned. And welcome home. And some I love you's greeted them at every turn. Naruto was, for once, speechless. No one had ever cheered for him, let alone praised him like these people were. He absentmindedly raised his hand and waved, causing the village to increase its cheering tenfold. The kids in the carriage all smiled, happy that Naruto was getting the recognition he so badly wanted. Naruto looked on at everyone that was gathered for his return. He didn't think it was possible for people to like him. From how Kanoha was, he thought all villagers would want him dead. But these people they were different. They loved him. They acknowledge him. A straight tear rolled its way down Naruto's cheek as he looked out into the crowd. The grin crept its way onto his face, eventually stretching from ear to ear and making him close his eyes. The crowd erupted with new vigor at their prince's happiness and they started to throw things at him. Naruto flinched at first but then realized what they were throwing. They were flowers, beautiful red roses and blue snapdragons. They lined the road in front of them and even on them. They were spread along the top of the carriages, and some got stuck on the samurai's armor. Naruto laughed at Idio who was trying to pluck a rose from his hakama without stabbing himself from the thorns. His laughter was short-lived however, as a snapdragon landed perfectly on his nose, causing Idio to burst into his own fit of laughter. Naruto threw the flower at his uncle and pouted in a way that made some of the less professional samurai laugh. Hey Uncle Idio, how come we aren't riding in a carriage like everyone else Naruto asked, looking over at Idio with a confused expression. Well, if your prince was returning after being thought dead for six years, wouldn't you want to see him Idio said, his one visible eye curling into a smile from his raised cheeks. Naruto smiled and nodded his agreement, turning to the rest of the crowd. His head shot back to his uncle and he said, you guys thought I was dead Idio nodded, slowly turning his head to look Naruto in the eye. Kanoha told us you died along with your mother and father. I'll tell you who they were when we get to the palace Naruto Dadi said, spitting out the word Kanoha like it was, a poison. Naruto's eyes lit up, excited to know who his parents were and what they were like. 
he couldn't wait to get to the palace now. Kachan Odo-san are they like me he thought to himself as he looked down at the road, going deep into thought. Are they proud? Bakashi sped through the forest at an alarming rate. To all who saw him he would have just been a white blur of movement. He traveled like this for two days straight, not stopping for anything other than sleeping and eating. Even then he only stopped for about an hour or so. He had arrived at the border to Whirlpool country a few hours ago, and was, now picking up his pace to arrive sooner than needed. Minato sensei I'm sorry, he thought as he jumped off a branch and began walking on the road below. I wasn't there for Naruto, he pulled out his book and put it in front of his face, lazily reading its contents with little interest. I won't make the same mistake twice Dottie said aloud, throwing the book into a nearby bush and running. Unknown to him, ever since he hit the border of Whirlpool, he was, being followed. A ninja in the shadows matched every move the Konohan in made, making sure not to let their eyes off of him. What he saw would surprise and confuse him to no end. Kakashi Haddock, copycat ninja of the Hidden Leaf, removed his headband. He untied it from his head, held it in front of him for a few seconds, then dropped it in front of him. He stepped on it with his next stride, leaving it to accumulate dust in his tracks. The Whirlpool Ninja smiled approvingly and vanished, heading towards the direction of Yuzugakur to inform the Yuzukage of this rather strange turn of events. Naruto and his uncle rode up to double metal gates, each identical with the Yuzumaki clan symbol in the middle. Naruto looked up at the giant building in front of them. No, it wasn't a building, it was, more like a castle. The roof coiled at the top and formed into a majestic-looking dragon. Dark red in color and its mouth was, open, seeming to roar at the people below. The main building's walls were made up of the same kind of marble that the gates leading to Yuzugaka were, only these were a little less worn and more maintained. Off of the main building branched a long hallway-looking structures that stopped to connect to other buildings. These buildings were the dojo and kitchen by the looks of them from the outside. The road led from the main gate and branched out in several directions, forming a miniature town-like area that resembled that of a compound, imagine the Ichiha compound only a little bigger and less gloomy. Each house was, expertly built with wood and stone, a Yuzumaki crest on each individual building. Naruto stared at the giant compound, completely taken by its eyes. He let out an involuntary whistle when the giant gates opened, revealing a brick path leading up to the big orange doors of the main house. Hey, Uncle Lydio, can you tell me who my parents were now Naruto asked, jumping off of his horse and landing with a soft thump. Right after you meet your teachers and we get something to eat, I'm starving Idio said, holding his stomach and groaning. Naruto's stomach growled in agreement and he grinned sheepishly. He I guess I could go for something to eat Dottie said, scratching the back of his head nervously. Idio chuckled and led him to the building on the right of the main house, which did prove to be the kitchen. Upon entering an average wooden door, Naruto's nose filled with the most wonderful smells in the world. He closed his eyes and savored the smell, taking deep longing breaths. His eyes opened again when he heard a pot clang to the ground, and someone cursed. Damn it Jinko. Stop screwing around. We need to get the food ready for when Idio Samura turns. said a tall gruff looking man in a chef's hat. Sorry boss, it just got away from me. The man named Gino said as he picked up the pot and began washing it in the sink. Naruto looked around in the kitchen and saw many people. They were chopping, cooking, steaming, cleaning, and everything in between. The kitchen was, a beehive of activity, every person having a purpose and something to do. There were swears being thrown left and right about who cooked the food wrong, if it was, even the slightest bit off, if the dishes weren't mirror-like and clean. Idio's eyelid twitches every time someone curses, while Naruto tries his best not to snicker. Hey. What did I tell you about using that kind of language in front of Naruto Idio, yelled, stomping the ground and waving his arms comedically. Everyone stopped moving. Everyone stopped talking. They slowly and shakily turned their heads, meeting eyes, or eye in Idio's case, with a pissed off Idio. Their eyes visibly widened and they all gulped. The eyes in the room drifted down to a snickering blonde boy. The man named Jinko gasped and ran up to him, stopping short a few feet and dropping to the ground in a bow. I apologize for our behavior, Naruto-sama. Please forgive us Jinko said frantically, his head still planted to the floor. The other people in the kitchen gasped loudly and dropped what they were holding, following in Jinko's footsteps and bowing low to the ground. Please forgive us they all said in unison. Naruto was, at a loss. All he could do was, scratch the back of his head and look over to his uncle for help. Idio chuckled and said, all is forgiven everyone. Now, more importantly, is the food ready his eyes glazed over, and she looked hopefully over to the man with the chef hat, most likely the head chef by the looks of him. Not all of it is ready Idio-sama. The Raymond is tough, so I guess you the man began, but was, cut off by a yellow blur running past him. The blur created a gust of wind that surprised everyone, either knocking them back or making them sit from their bound position. Everyone's heads turned to see Naruto, chopsticks in hand, eating a bowl of Raymond that was, prepared to be served. 
They blinked a few times before Ideo burst into laughter, clutching his sides and rolling on the floor. Whoa this is good. It's way better than Grandpa Tucci's Raymond Naruto said as he began drinking the broth of his now finished Raymond. Um, Naruto-sama, that one was, imperfect. It was, still not ready yet. The head chef said as he cheered in his head that Naruto liked it. Huh? This one's not perfect. How's that possible? This is awesome Naruto said, holding out the bowl and grinning. More please he said, his grin growing even wider at the thought of more of this delicious Raymond. Ginko nodded and ran over to him, taking the bowl and filling it with more Raymond. He bowed to Naruto and held out the bowl to him respectfully. Naruto took the bowl, thanked the man with a bow, and ate his Raymond with a renewed vigor. All the kitchen staff looked at the boy with a mix of respect, horror, and intrigue. How is that even possible eh? Woman asked, completely shocked at the speed he was, eating. Haha <laughs> just like an Uzumaki should be. A true Raymond lover Idio said, clapping both his hands together. Oh crap we have to feed two Uzumaki now I don't think we have that much food left in the kitchen the head chef thought as he continued to work on the main course. Dinko poured a glass of formal sake for Idio and a cup of apple juice for Naruto. He placed the cups in front of them and bowed, leaving to help with the cooking. Uncle Idio, why are these people working so hard Naruto asked, sipping his apple juice and looking up at his uncle. They're the servants of the household. The kitchen staff to be more exact. Idio said, taking a sip from his sake. Naruto's eyes widened and he said, what? Servants. You mean like slaves Idio chuckled and shook his head. No Naruto. These people all volunteered to serve the household. And don't worry, we refuse to let them work for free. They all make a very large sum of money for everything they do. Dottie said, placing his drink down on the counter. Naruto smiled and drank the rest of his apple juice, going over to the sink and washing it out, then placing it in the dishwasher. The staff looked at Naruto with clear shock in their eyes, while Lidio just smiled proudly at the blonde in front of him. Naruto-sama, what are you doing? We can take care of everything for you. A woman standing near him said, obviously shocked by the boy's actions. Naruto shook his head vigorously and said, nope. I don't work like that. He smiled at everyone there with one of his trademark grins. Everyone looked at him with a newfound respect. Very noble Naruto. Now, I believe it's time we meet your teachers. Idio said, placing his hand on Naruto's shoulder. Naruto nodded and waved to the people in the kitchen. Thanks for the food. See you guys later he called as he left the room, leaving a shocked kitchen staff. The head chef clapped his hands and yelled, alright. Back to work. It must be more than perfect for Idio-sama and Naruto-sama. Let's go maggots. The Kashi approached the gates of Yuzugakur. Having been traveling for days on end he was ready to collapse, but he had to do this. He approached the guard and said, I am Kakashi Haddock, former ninja of the Hidden Leaf. I wish to speak with Idio Yuzumaki about the war. Idio led Naruto down a long hall covered with paintings and a soft red carpet lacing the floor. They stopped in front of a door with a large golden seven on the top, split down the middle by the double doors it was, covering. Two wooden handles were on either side of the seven, each with a trim of orange and words carved into them. Idio looked down at Naruto and said, Are you ready to meet your teachers? Naruto Naruto nodded excitedly, not taking his eyes off of the door that led to his future. Idio reached down, painfully slowly for Naruto, and gripped the handle. He swung the doors open as if the treasures of the world were on the other side. When Idio opened the door, Naruto's eyes were darting left and right, studying the room and its occupants. There was a long wooden table, about knee high and polished. Three cushions were on each side of the table, each had a label and a name. One of the cushions was, at the head of the table, a different color than the others. Unlike the dark red cushions that surrounded the table, this one was, a bright gold color with burnt orange laces lining its sides. On top of the table was, a map of the entire ninja world. Each great shinobi nation was, outlined in black and labeled expertly in fluid writing. The kanji for map arched above the countries in elegant font and form. To Naruto's disappointment, nobody was present as he and his uncle walked to the head of the table. Where is everybody Naruto whined, crossing his arms over his chest in a pout. Idio chuckled and put a hand on his nephew's shoulder. Don't worry Naruto, they'll be here any minute dot at least it was on the outside. On the inside was, more like, those no good lazy. Surrounded by two shinobi and one kanoichi, Kakashi Haddock walked through the main street of the village, admiring its thriving populace. Nice village you have. Kakashi said, trying to start a conversation with the three ninja around him. Unfortunately, he got a reply. Don't speak. For now, you are a prisoner until we find out your motives. Said one of the shinobi. Kakashi sighed and put his hands in his pockets, his one lazy eye looking forward with great interest. Where are you? Naruto Kakashi thought as he looked through the crowds of people. Can I ask just one question? He directed his words to the Kanoichi in the front. She turned and looked at him with mild interest in her eyes, along with a kind of playful and childish glimmer. Speak dot she said, getting the two shinobi to stop and turn to Kakashi. Thanks. 
Was there a party or something here earlier? All the escort's faces planted at his question. That's his question thought the shinobi on his right. The female was the first to recover from the blunt question. She brushed her hair away from her face with a grace that Kakashi couldn't dream of and said, yes, there was. We were celebrating the return of our prince, Naruto Uzumaki Sama. Only For a moment did Kakashi's training betray him as he looked slightly shocked. What do you mean prince he asked, wondering if him coming here was a mistake. Only one question. Keep moving. The shinobi on Kakashi's left said. Kakashi sighed and continued walking, wondering if now would be a good time to run. Saratobi sat in the unusually quiet council room with the rest of the council members. This was supposed to be a debate on what to do about the financial district of Konoha and whether to add more shops or not. But somehow, Saratobi didn't think it would go that way. And he was right. Danzo walked in with two Anbu agents right behind him, getting the attention of everyone in the room. Okajama, if you would be so kind, I would like to borrow a great sum of shinobi. Danzo said, shocking the old man to no end. Oh. And why would that be Danzo the old Hokage said, taking a long puff of his pipe. I wish to go to war with the Yuzukage and Yuzushi Siratobi nearly choked on his pipe and went into a small fit of coughs. Absolutely not Danzo. If we did that, we would most certainly lose he shouted, slamming his open palm down on the wooden tabletop. Now wait Siratobi, I think you underestimate the power of Konoha. We have you, Kakashi, the Jounin sensei, not to mention the promising Anbu and children. Danzo said, smiling slightly as he made his point. I agree with Danzo. said Hamaru, who got a nod of agreement from the pink haired Hurano. Are you all insane? Siratobi pleaded with them, but it was to no avail as more and more people fell in agreement with Danzo and his statement of war with Hizushi Agakur. Siratobi had no choice but to have a vote, all in favor of going to war with Whirlpool, raise your hand. Much to his disappointment, almost every hand in the room went up, with the exception of some of the Jounin sensei and a handful of ninja. But, the civilian council members outnumber them by far. War with Yuzushi Agakur is now unavoidable. There will be bloodshed. 